Um, so, hi everyone, thanks for attending my presentation today. I'm Viviana Bastidas Melo. Um, I'm going to present my previous research in, in the field of smart cities. Um, I conducted this research um, in, in the Department of Computer Science at Maynooth University in Ireland. Um, the main topic was um, the, uh, the alignment between services and information in smart city architectures and how we really apply, apply the concept of enterprise architecture to, um, to drive the digital transformation and innovation um, of city services. So this is the agenda for today. Um, this is, um, I'm going to present the motivation of this research, um, the business and IT alignment concept. Um, the first case study that I conducted in one of the Irish cities then the alignment um, concept in the smart city field. So what does mean exactly this alignment in the urban context? Then the framework itself. So what are the different components of the ARCHI smart city framework? And how we demonstrate and evaluate the framework uh, in an Israeli setting? And finally, the conclusions, especially focusing on the theoretical and practical contributions of this research. So to start, um, so we know that smart cities are urban environments where advanced and innovative services are offered to improve the overall quality of life for the citizens. And uh, we have seen um, in the literature, but also in the, in the observations during uh, this research that uh, the cities and municipalities, especially city authorities, are uh, facing many problems when they're they are digitalizing the city services because uh, these uh, cities are complex systems um, which involve the development and improvement of city services that uh, must respond to the concerns and goals of different stakeholders uh, with the main focus on the citizens' needs. At the same time, these um, city services uh, must be supported by diverse data sources and multi-domain applications and heterogeneous systems and technologies. So that's important to say that those um, elements uh, of those cities that um, um, have this complexity um, challenges, the way that the city authorities and the municipalities um, aim to achieve the, achieve the different strategies, which involve different city services and the underlying information systems behind of these city services. Um, so it's important to say that if, for example, there is a specific problem, say, for example, here between the data of an application programming interface and application service that is not working properly, um, is affecting directly the city services. So the different people who are involved in the, in the city municipalities, but also um, the, the, the way that we can achieve the strategies. Um, impacting directly the citizens. For example, we can affect uh, the different quality of life dimensions of the citizens. So that's important why um, the connection between those different elements, between the strategies, the services, and the information systems are important when we are um, addressing and driving the digital transformation of those city services. So the alignment between those elements um, is a key element when we are um, working on the public sector and digital transformations. So, but what does mean exactly this alignment? So this alignment has been um, a study and uh, has been addressed in, specifically in the corporate and profit sector, and it has been called particularly business and IT alignment. So the alignment of business and technology is defined as a means to quantify the extent to which business needs are met with solutions provided by information technology. So in other words, we have seen that uh, the business and IT alignment um, is, is how the organizations really use information technology to achieve their business goals. So the IT enables uh, the, the business uh, goals and the strategies. It's not, it's not in the other way around. And it's happening, as I said, in the corporate and profit sector, but also in the public sector. So in the end of the 90s, 
um, IBM proposed an information system architecture and around uh, 2000, um, an um, emerging and promising approach uh, appears uh, that is called enterprise architecture uh, with the aim to address and to help the companies to address the business and IT alignment. So how they can really move, for example, from a current state of the organization, which implies different components, say, for example, motivation components, strategies, business components, business processes, business functions, information systems, uh, say, data application, monitoring applications, but also the technologies and the physical elements of those elements. So how these current elements, the current state of these organizations, um, can move to a future state and how we can plan and govern that change. So that's why this approach of enterprise architecture is very important when we are addressing um, the transformations of those organizations. So one key element um, when we are designing the enterprise architecture is the process of creating different models. So that's why um, we have the enterprise modeling, which help us to really um, create the different views, the different architecture views, as we have seen, for example, uh, just as a comparison, when we are designing a building, a bridge, uh, um, a house, we have um, the architecture with different elements and the electricity, the water models, etc. Here in the IT design, we have similar models, which have different stakeholders and which have, uh, which includes different components of the architecture. Um, so when we are designing those models, uh, when we are designing those components, it's important to consider, uh, for example, um, the language to design those elements. So the enterprise modeling language um, is an, a key element when we are also designing those enterprise models. So the, the, the language in this case, um, the argument, which is nowadays one of the most uh, uh, prominent and also widely used uh, languages for modeling enterprise architecture is a key um, component of this business and IT alignment because help us to address um, the connection of those different uh, uh, elements in the organization. So um, we have seen, uh, as I said, this approach in the corporate sector, but I had the opportunity uh, to conduct the first case study in one of the cities in Ireland, which is called Limerick. So this is the Limerick um, city, which um, where we develop a Limerick enterprise architecture project. So th that project focuses on the different case studies to illustrate how enterprise architecture can be applied to add value to city uh, to the city council and uh, the, the services that we provide uh, are provided by the city council. So the main um, focus for the project was um, on the revitalization of the Limerick O'Connell Street, which is a um, main street in the city center that involves uh, different stakeholders, say the retailers that are uh, in this uh, street, uh, the citizens, um, but also the city authorities, which are responsible of the different departments um, in Limerick. So we adopted the enterprise architecture best practices, and also we developed the procurement guidelines for new technologies. So we were um, focused on the um, deployment of new football context uh, um, sensors, uh, which capture, for example, the number of people who are commuting by walking or cycling in the city. And that information can be used by different stakeholders in the city. For example, the people who are planning um, the new buildings in this street, but also, for example, the people who are um, talking about tourism strategies to know and uh, to attract more people, especially at the night time and say uh, how they can improve this environment and say if they the, the different strategies are, are, are achieving the main objectives that they wanted uh, in this uh, in this specific area. So but when we started to uh, work with the with the people of Liberic, we asked why we need uh, like those um, different for example sensors, the different platforms that they want they, they planned um, to, to buy and some platforms that they already have. 
So we saw that they have a limited digital strategy, which is an strategy that help us to understand the why and also to understand how they wanted to become a smart city and what are the different initiatives and the different projects that they wanted to develop. So, and when we um, started, um, as I said, we started with the uh, football contest uh, city service, um, we saw that the information, for example, of this city service um, were uh, looked within the applications of a specific department in the city council. So not all of the stakeholders uh, were using the information and valuable data was uh, looked behind of the platforms of the service providers uh, because, for example, they were in cloud, they were not inside of the city council. So many challenges that um, arise around the implementation of these solutions. So, for example, say the information for the mobility domain can be used to achieve the city goals of the environment domain at the same time, for example, for the tourism domain. However, that was difficult to be um, achieved because the, the information was created in silos and not all the people can have access to this information and they were not able to, um, to make better decisions with this, this uh, data. So, we adopted um, the enterprise architecture approach, particularly the open group architecture framework and its modeling language architecture. So we develop a set of models uh, to um, create uh, the integration of those different applications and the integration of those different domains, uh, the integration around like the vertical and uh, horizontal connection of these different applications. So we created an architecture repository that help us to move from a current state with all the problems that we saw to a future state where they can have this integrated data for all the people that they need. Um, however, and through the application of the enterprise architecture approach and by using this specific um, language, we saw that there is a need or there was a need for the precise and ambiguous, ambiguous specification of smart city concepts. It means that when we, for example, have the models, not all the people understood the concepts because they were not concepts um, uh, particularly for the smart cities domain. So for example, say concepts such as mobility, environment, tourism, were using um, in the departments that they have, but they were not um, found or in the, in the modeling language that we were using. So these particularly concepts um, were very important or are very important for the definition of the, the urban architectures. How, however, they were not present. So based on the literature review and the research gaps, and I'm sorry, and the literature review and the observations, so we have different um, research gaps. Um, so as I said, for example, there is a lack of alignment between the service and information layer. So it means that there is not a clear connection between the city services that we are offering and the information systems that support those different um, city services when we are designing these architectures. And at the same time, at the same time, there is a misalignment with the smart city strategy. The second gap that we found is that there is a lack of an enterprise architecture perspe perspective to create integrated services among the different domains. So um, if, um, say, in the last decade, this approach has been used in the corporate sector, the public sector also started to see how this uh, perspective of enterprise architecture can be applied, but um, it's not really something that um, has been used for the smart city domain. So the integration of those services was not really too clear to be done by using this approach. Um, and the third uh, gap is around the limitation of these enterprise modeling languages such as Archimate, which is like the domain specific concept of smart cities to support the life. So the figure in the right side show us that um, most of the smart city architecture were um, focusing on the information concepts, for example, software concepts, applications, the data, but also some service concepts, say, for example, Mm, organization structures or city services. However, not many of them were looking at how we can really connect those different service concepts, information concepts, but at the same time, the strategic concepts. 
So there was a gap on, on this um, dimension, on this perspective of the architectural alignment. So to address uh, this problem, we started to design uh, based on the literature review and based on the different um, interviews with the practitioners, um, a set of design principles that help us to design a solution or an artifact that can help uh, to address the alignment in the smart city context. So we use um, a design science research approach um, and we started to create those principles that define what is exactly uh, the alignment in this field. So the alignment should have, for example, an objective in this field and the objective should go in the direction to achieve what the the main city goals, but also to meet the expectations and the needs of the citizens. So, although in the, as we saw in the in the corporate sector, uh, we wanted to achieve all the time the business needs, say to support the main stakeholders of the enterprise. In um, in the smart cities field, in the public sector, we wanted really to meet the citizens needs. So this is the main focus: the citizen centricity, the people centricity, where we, we need to provide better services, better solutions for them. So, but the alignment also has an stage. So, for example, we should define or design architectures who, um, which respond to the consistency, compatibility, and also um, as smart cities are dynamic environments. So those uh, architectures should not be static. So the alignment should change. So the transitions show us, the transitions, the transformation show us that the, the, the dynamicity is important. Also the scope, we have that alignment uh, as we saw in the problem in Limerick, normally seen as the vertical alignment where we have all like uh, solutions uh, for a specific, uh, say, in, uh, domain or even for a specific uh, application. But we should be able to uh, create uh, different applications that are also uh, integrated among uh, different domains in an horizontal uh, way as well. So, and finally, a mechanism. So, we can design the, this uh, smart city architecture by using uh, enterprise modeling language. So just as an example on how um, the citizens needs um, can be represented, uh, for example, by using an application, uh, a mobile application, a citizen can, for example, require or search for the most environmentally friendly route and we saw that we are using information from the planetary information from the weather forecast and air quality data, which belongs those, uh, that information belongs to different domains. Uh, and we should be able to integrate this information from uh, the different domains before the uh, implementation and deployment of the different solutions. So the design uh, of these solutions um, uh, on time is very important and the integration of these solutions on time is important to uh, address the alignment in the smart city architectures. So based on those um, principles, uh, we develop a framework which is called Archi Smart City. Um, this, this framework enables urban planners to align citizens' needs with IT solutions. And the framework is composed of three main elements. So the first one is a meta model. Uh, the second one is a graphical domain specific language. And the third one is the semantic analyzer. So the meta model uh, defines the ab abstract syntax of uh, the framework. So it defines which concepts, which relationships, which elements should be considered when we are designing city services and when we are um, supporting those city services with information systems in order to achieve a specific strategies of, uh, of these cities. So this meta model use um, different uh, modeling languages such as unified modeling language. And we also uh, deploy and implement the meta model by using Eclipse modeling framework. So we have uh, the graphical domain specific language with, uh, which presents um, the graphical notations and um, the, uh, the specific um, uh, uh, meaning of each of these concepts. So the graphical domain specific language um, uh, allow us to present the models to the end users, which in this case are the city authorities, 
but also, for example, the citizens that can be involved in the in the in the solutions for specific city, city services. So this um, graphical uh, domain specific language um, have um, the specific elements and how they can be understood by, by the, the, the stakeholders. So it means that, for example, if we are talking to the GIS manager, and we are talking also at the same time, say some way, someone more in the strategic level, say the head of the smart city strategy in a city council, they should be able to understand those models, which are uh, representing the same solution. So we have uh, different models that can be uh, understood by them um, at the same time, uh, but also the language allow us or allow the city, the city um, authorities to communicate between them and to plan better for the uh, for the services that they want to transform, but also to make decisions on um, what elements they can improve or how, what to change or what, for example, other solutions or other information systems or applications need, need to be integrated. Also, uh, the semantic analyzer is a very important component because once we define the models, um, we can analyze the models. So it means that we, go, we don't go directly to the implementation of these solutions, that we can't first analyze what is happening if we are, if, even if we have, for example, real-time real information of those services or static information of those services, we can analyze what can happen in these in this, uh, cities with those changes. So the semantic analyzer in this case um, was designed to show us if there is a misalignment. For example, if an application service is not working properly, so what city services are affected, and at the same time, um, which city strategies in terms of city goals and objectives, objectives are affected in the city. So in this context of um, one specific service can be easier to manage, but if we see how many city services, how many applications, how many stakeholders, how many um, city goals are involved in a city. So it can be very useful to analyze the models and to understand really what are the different elements that can be affected and uh, what are the quality of life dimensions of the citizens that are affected positively or negatively. So to evaluate and demonstrate the, um, the framework. Um, we conduct another case study in a city in Israel, um, and we choose particularly the waste management service, which is um, a service that at that time had different problems that we can see in the, in the diagram in the right side. So um, Natania, this city had um, a platform that can use the information, the feedback from the citizens um, to understand what is happening with the different city services. In this case, it, uh, the, the, the heating map shows the interactions um, from the call center, but also from social media. And uh, it used, this application used artificial intelligence to understand if that feedback is neutral, positive or negative. And in this case, for example, it shows that there is a negative feedback uh, for the waste management city service uh, in both in, in the north west city center, but also in the city center south. So um, by analyzing that this city service had different problems, we help them to understand how they can by using information technology, by using um, different um, uh, solutions, how they can improve it. So we designed a solution um, in two different, um, I can say, dimensions. First one is in the recycling of the garbage from the production source during the recycling activity. And the second part of the solution was in the dynamic adaptation of roads that affect the collection of waste during the collection activity. So we were with them, we designed the solution by using the Archie Smart City uh, framework and um, by talking to them, by the, talking to the different stakeholders involved, um, but also by designing a model, uh, uh, different models, for example, like this, that uh, it shows uh, obviously some complexity um, of what we were talking about the, the waste management service, but also show us 
how the mm, the framework can um, can help us to represent and to design for example we were able to uh, design the different strategies and quality of flight dimensions affected so we will go through a top-down approach by uh, really answering why we need this, those uh, changes, those transformations in the waste management city service, and also connected connected those elements with, uh, for example, uh, smart city indicators, um, different quality of life dimensions. Sometimes we feel, for example, that if we don't collect the garbage, we are affecting, um, say, um, the housing conditions. Um, but we are affecting more dimensions. For example, we are affecting health, we can affect the environmental quality. So different dimensions that can be mobile, that can be represented, and we can really, um, with the different stakeholders, understand what can be the impact if we are not providing good services uh, for them, or if the services are not working properly. So, but also we can define the different domains and city services. So we have the liability domain, which is connected directly to the different smart city indicators based on the smart city indicator de de defined by ISO. And also we have the city actors and decisions. So who is involved in these decisions? Who uh, are involved, involved in these transformations? So we have, for example, say the smart city domain manager, the service providers, the city authorities, particularly the city authority was the head of the operations administration um, who has the responsibility of more people and also who has the responsibility to, um, to contract, for example, new service providers or to, to know if they need to um, prioritize new uh, places for, for the collection um, based on the feedback from the citizens, or in this case, based, for example, on the information that we were collecting from the sensors. Um, we can represent the different applications, say websites, dashboards, uh, the geographical information systems, the routing systems, and also um, the new systems that can help the, 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 the city to, um, to understand uh, where we need, where, in which places we need some attention. So, um, but the important part of this application is that we can see which stakeholders uh, are going to make the decisions with the applications, with the information that we provide through this application. So who is involved? And in the future state, what else? If we need a new, for example, sensor, or if we a new system, uh, which stakeholders are going to be affected? Um, of course, we have the software services and we represent it as application programming interfaces to say, okay, so we need some integration of these services, we need some integration of these applications, but also, so how we can um, provide uh, the specific qualities of these uh, applications. So the quality of the application services are important and it's something that should be considered when we are designing the services. So is, for example, privacy important? Is availability important? Is accuracy important? So is security important? Which elements? should be considered and should be also um, um, defined as a requirement, for example, of the tenders document when we are going, where we are, when we are going to contract new um, uh, service providers. So this is just an example of the future state of one of these elements um, that we designed for, for Nathan, for the city in Israel. So uh, additionally to the work with the practitioners, we also demonstrate um, the application of this um, uh, framework uh, by using a computer-based uh, solution uh, that take those models that we design all the set of all the, the set of models that we have and um, transform those models in a language um, that is called resource description framework RDF. So we move from XML to RDF and this RDF um, uh, structure of the models um, or format can help us to read, for example, and analyze the models and can be analyzed by both uh, by people, but also by computers. So we process all the models and um, we um, analyze uh, um, the content, the semantics, of the models and um, we visualize 
the results uh, of the models uh, based on um, the information that we collect with the practitioner. So, for example, I develop a um, web application that takes those models um, and uh, by using the transformation that is explained in the semantic alignment analysis, um, we can be able to, uh, for example, uh, realize um, an enterprise architecture top-down analysis by, by starting from the goals and moving to the strategies, for example, to the different domains. So we know which goals are affected, which strategies are affected, which domains are related to those strategies, um, which quality of life dimensions are affected, if, for example, as I said before, something is not working properly, say we have highlighted in, in, uh, in red uh, here, for example, the current value of uh, the number of beans that are not collected. So we are not achieving uh, the target value in, in the collection of the, of the beans in the city. So what is happening is really that the service provider is not uh, collecting the garbage or for example we are not we don't have a, a, a good quality of the sensors and we are not achieving that quality and probably this is affecting also the in the information that we receive from those sensors so this computer based analysis um help us to reduce um, um the negative impact before the implementation so we can understand and know what, it, what, what can happen uh, by using real-time information uh, on the different components of the solutions, um, but also we can reduce the risk of the implementations before um, developing the different solutions. Um, additionally, um, we evaluated the um, RKS Smart City um, by using a semi-quantitative survey uh, that was um, a, a very important, I can say, um, a part of the re this research because it allowed us to move from a local um, context of uh, one city um, in Israel to a context of the Federation of Local Authorities in Israel, where we had more people and more experts in the smart city domain that uh, understood uh, what we were doing and also um, they appreciate uh, our research and our results and they saw some uh, important uh, uh, findings that can be applied uh, to other contexts, uh, to other cities uh, in, 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 the, in Israel. So we in, uh, apply this uh, semi-quantitative survey for, to the Smart City Domain Manager of Natania Municipality, but also to the Smart City Domain Experts of, the, of this federation. So we evaluated, evaluated particularly the abstract syntax of the framework, but also the concrete syntax and semantics of this framework. So the graphical notation, the different concepts and relationships, the different attributes. So each concept has a specific attribute that um, help us to uh, incorporate more semantics, more elements in the, in the models that can be, um, for example, um, in the future, um, be in, uh, in, um, implemented with new uh, real-time information. So we have also the concepts description which help us or help the people to understand really what uh, we were doing. So we developed different scenarios for them, for the, for the, for the, the cities, and uh, we evaluate through these different scenarios, the concepts that we develop uh, as part of the Arches Mass City framework. Um, to finalize um, this presentation, um, so the, the main um, uh, conclusions that we have is that these uh, smart city solutions um, have been um, mainly uh, implemented um, having into account more technical perspectives, um, more implementation perspectives, but sometimes we forgot that we are really uh, providing services uh, to improve uh, something that affects the citizens. Um, so we designed a solution, although it sounds something technical, but at the end is a tool, is um, an, uh, um, 
a framework that uh, has been used by the practitioners, um, but the practitioners that don't have very technical skills, but they understand uh, what are the solutions that they can plan based on the main on the main um, directions of the strategies, and they can plan and also analyze and see what can be used. So, in terms of the impact for research, um, I can say that. Uh, this research advances the current research on smart city fields, um, which has been mainly, as I said, focused on the implementation of the information and technology aspects um, in these complex and dynamic urban environments. Um, also, this research contributes to the current understanding of how city strategies should be aligned with the smart city implementations. So it's not just about um, talking about the information system or technology implementations of the physical deployment of these solutions, if not also to understand uh, why we are doing these uh, uh, implementations. So the connection with the why where is answered by the different strategy, where we have the motivation is very important in this research. Um, this research formalizes the understanding of the different concepts and relationships from the smart city domain that together provide a coherent and ambiguous enterprise architecture description of this domain. So that's also very important because if we have common, a common language, in this case, the Archie Smart City framework that uh, provides this language, so we can have um, a better understanding of the solutions and the different stakeholders of these cities can, can help us on that. And the impact for research, finally, so this research proposes an approach to extend the Archimate language in the smart cities field, uh, where obviously domain specific elements were required. Um, this study helps uh, the cities and municipalities to uh, face the challenge of integration of city services among the same of different domains since the early stage of design. So that's important also that um, sometimes we believe that uh, we are just providing a solution for a specific domain, but even in that domain, uh, we need the integration of different elements. Uh, also, uh, we are, when we are talking different domains, different um, uh, sectors in the smart cities, so we need that uh, early uh, understanding and the design can help us to avoid uh, future uh, problems in terms of cost, in terms of risk, etc. So, and our case study demonstrates the application of the smart city, uh, smart, Archie smart city by designing a city service solution according to the city goals and objectives, where the technology is only the enable of these uh, of these solutions. So that's important to also highlight um, that uh, although we provide a technical solution, which is the the modeling language. Um, it can be used by people, by, by practitioners, and um, it helps them to really design accordingly um, what is defined in the main uh, policies um, at the level of the city council, but also at the national level where they find it uh, more specific direction, directions which in, in, which it, in, in where each country should go. So that's also important. Um, finally, this is... Um, some publications um, that I have uh, in my PhD. Um, just like two weeks ago, uh, we have um, all the results of the case study in Israel published. It was published um, in the uh, Business and Information Systems in the Engineering Journal. So um, that's a very important journal for, um, for enterprise modeling, but also uh, uh, to show the results of uh, this research in, in this field, in the smart cities field. That's all. Thank you very much.